Hi students, this is the video that will outline the requirements for your final portfolio. I'm going to try to make this video as concise as possible, but in it you'll find information about the required contents for your portfolio, design decisions that will enhance your portfolio, mechanics, otherwise known as grammar issues that you must attend to in your portfolio, the reflections that need to be included, and the required uh, single project revision that needs to be included. Your portfolio has several required contents. These are all outlined in the portfolio checklist that is included in the weeks 14, 15, and 16 module of LEARN. I'm going to outline in this slide what those requirements are just to reinforce them for you so that you will have additional information beyond what is outlined in that checklist. So on the landing page of your Google site, you need to be sure that you have clear links in the left-hand sidebar to all of the student learning outcomes, the slows. There are nine of them. They were already pre-built into the template, so they should be there, and you should have been populating them this whole semester as you did each project with reflections on those slows. Some of you chose to use a different design, a different template, um, and you had your slows in a header menu, and that didn't really accommodate the fact that there are nine of them, so it pushed some of them down to another line or put them in a pull-down menu. The nine slows need to be immediately visible to me, so you might need to choose a different template in order to do that. You also need to have clear links in the left-hand sidebar to all major projects, projects one, two, and three. You also need a link in the sidebar to the resume. And one of the examples I'm gonna show later, the student doesn't link the resume from the sidebar, but rather from the main content area on the landing page, that's not ideal. It's easier to find if it's in the left-hand sidebar. You also need to have your bio or personal statement on the landing page, your home page. It should take up the body um, in the middle of the page there. I'll show you an example of this later on in this video. You also need to have your final 500 word course reflection memo embedded on or linked to the landing page. You also can include an optional Jing video about your learning in the course, and you can include that on your landing page as well if you so choose. Elsewhere on the site, you need to include the reflections for all nine slows, revised and in the designated sidebar links. So my comments here just sort of piggyback on the comment I just made about the fact that your nine slows will be in the sidebar areas. I just want to remind you that you need to revise them um, for all nine of them. You also need to have your three project reflection memos attached to their own, uh, attached as their own items to each project's page. Projects one, two, and three needed a project reflection memo in memorandum format addressing the questions that were listed in those assignment prompts that you needed to attend to. You also need to include one fully revised major project with an accompanying video walkthrough of that revision that will be housed on that project's page, and that will be labeled revision. I'll talk about that more in a moment. I'm showing here on the screen a page from your textbook, and I apologize that the slide is a bit blurry, um, but this is a page from your textbook about resumes. It shows an example resume. You need to write a resume, and you will be doing so in this module of our course. You need to include a revised version of the resume in a sidebar link area on your final Google site. You will follow the directions in technical communication today about writing a resume, and almost all of you, because you're first time college students, will create a chronological resume. And that will start with your education background first. Then it will have your employment, and then it will have other features later on down the page. The example that I'm showing on the page here has the content. You can see the use of headers, the use of different indentation styles, and some bullet point uses. It's all very clean, and you can see in the small blue font and the arrows on that page that Rick Johnson Sheehan in your book identifies what the resume is doing and why. So please read this very carefully and craft your own resume using some of these design features and content development um, strategies to create the most rich and detailed resume that you can. Include your resume as a PDF, not as a Word file, but as a PDF, either embedded on the page that is linked to from that sidebar menu area, or once I get to that page as a 
a file that I can access. You also need to write a bio slash personal statement. This is discussed in your textbook. Um, it is discussed two times on page 122 and page 133. I'm showing 133 on the screen right now. It is discussed in your book as a micro genre, but the quick definition of the personal statement is this. It is a brief uh, or one page document that offers an overview of your background and experience while highlighting the qualities that make you unique. You're not going to be writing a full page. You'll be writing one solid paragraph that, descri that describes your background and experience and highlights the qualities that you have that make you unique relative to our class. I want to emphasize that there. Um, you're also welcome to create a Jing video version of the bio personal statement that attaches some of these concepts concerning your unique qualities and your strengths and your background to our class uh, learning over the course of the semester. And you can include that either embedded or linked to your main page as well. Now I'm going to talk about the final course reflection memorandum. This is a really important document that you need to write and you need to attach to the landing page, the home page of your website. This is going to be a 500 word, roughly two page memo in standard memorandum format. You need to address the memo to me or a prospective employer. You need to consider all nine of our slows, all nine of our learning outcomes, but be sure to especially emphasize your learning on slows two and nine. And I ask you to do that because those are the student learning outcomes that we are assessing for in our program right now. So we need to make sure that everybody who's teaching English 219 is asking their students to reflect on those in particular with particular attention. Now you need to use specific examples from your major projects and revisions as evidence of your learning of the slows. So in this memorandum, you will refer specifically to things you did maybe in a draft of a project that you changed when you got to the final version um, and how your learning changed over time. You also need to indicate how the lessons you learned in this class will be beneficial to your future endeavors, whether those are academic endeavors or workplace endeavors. Um, you can create an optional Jing video to accompany this menu um, the, this memo, as I already said, it can accompany this memo, which will be on the same page as the biopersonal statement. So um, that Jing video can sort of encapsulate your learning um, and appear on the home page along with the attached memo if you wish. So you need to attach or embed the final reflective memo to your site's home or landing page. And I'm going to show you a previous student's example of how he delivered his final memorandum. So this student did give me permission to share his site. Now he used the site template um, that was provided to all of you. And while you can't see a lot of detail here, you, sure, you certainly can tell that this is, is the template. It includes the nine outcomes here on the left, the three projects, and on the home page right here, you can see that the student has his bio personal statement. You can't read the details here in this video, but you can see that it's a fairly well-developed paragraph. Down here, it has an attach attachment. It's linked to the reflective memo. This student did not choose to include the Jing video, which is fine, it's totally optional, but if you'd like to do that, you can. So once you click that reflective memo link, you can see that the student included on the page, and I cut off the top of it, but it does have a memorandum header, but you can see in this memo that it's multiple paragraphs, and it speaks specifically about many of the different projects in the class and the slows and how through the projects the, the student became more proficient in the slows with specific examples. The student also at the bottom of the page shown here included a link to a document version of this memo. So it's the same thing, it's just in two different forms. So this is the um, PDF version that I was able to pull up to look at the same document in memorandum format and it looks just a little bit different. So um, hopefully that's clear to you that on your home page, I'll go back up to that previous slide, on your home page, you would have your um, bio personal statement taking up the central landscape of that page, and then you would have the reflective memo also available there. You could also have it included as its own embedded PDF below. You could have it here, or you can just include it as a link like this student did. You click that link and it takes you to a version embedded on the page or as HTML on the page in this case, or you can have it once a person clicks here on this link, it could go direct, it could be a file which would go directly to a PDF like this. 
Okay, one more thing I want to point out here is that in the sidebar menu, you would have an item for the resume so that I could access the resume off the home page as well. Okay, now moving on, the student learning uh, outcome reflections, as I already mentioned, need to be included um, in these specific areas in the left-hand sidebar. So be sure that you revise the reflections now that the semester is ending. You will also, um, again, verify that they're in the correct sidebar areas over the semester, many students weren't putting them in those areas, so a lot of students lost points on slow reflections because they weren't moving them from the discussion board into their actual website. So make sure that all of those nine content areas are actually populated. You also need to be sure, and this is just reiterating what I said in the introductory slide here in this presentation, that you're including the reflections for projects one, two, and three. Be sure that you have those memoranda attached to projects one, two, and three to those pages. Now, another big responsibility that you have in this final project, and I apologize that I have this in draft mode on the screen, so you're seeing the squiggly lines underlining words like screen screencasting and ice cream, uh, because my computer doesn't think those are real words, but they are for our purposes. So this slide tells you about the project revision. In our class, you are being asked to pick one of the projects that you completed project one, two, or three, and you need to comprehensively revise it in these last few weeks of the class. You need to also create a three to five minute video walkthrough of the revision using a screencasting tool. You can use Jing, you can use the ice cream screen recorder, you can use QuickTime like I do, whatever you want to do, but you need to keep it between three and five minutes. In your screen screencast, you will show me the original project. You will also show me the rubric that I gave you that had your grade on it and had all my comments on it that should guide your revision. And then you'll show me the new version. So you're just going to talk me through or walk me through the changes that you made and why. You're going to attach the new version of the project to the same page where the old version was housed, but you're going to have a new file name for it, which is revision. If, for example, you revised your instructions video the video would have the new name revision as part of the video title. On that project's landing page, as I said, you need to be sure that you embed also the video walkthrough. Those are both required components. So a few notes here on design and mechanics before I show you a few examples and conclude this video. Be sure that you are wisely using color, page space, images, and alignment, among other design features, in ways that enhance your reader's or viewer's experience of the portfolio. Now the template itself is very plain. You might want to adapt the template, um, massage it as it were, make it more interesting, change the color choices. Um, we've studied design this semester, so you can use some of those concepts to improve the user's experience of your site. Also, be sure that you have eliminated all grammatical, punctuation, and syntactical errors in the text on all pages of your site. Okay, so as we head to the conclusion of this video, I want to show you a few students' portfolios. I've already shown you one, but this is another example of a student's landing page. You can't see it very well, but again, you recognize it as the landing page. And I just have in pink font on the page, don't forget that you need to include your two-page memo and optional embedded video on this landing home page, as I showed you in the previous example. Now, here is the home page again with text that exists there on the template. This is the template text. You need to remove it and include your own bio and personal statement in this space, as I showed in the previous student example a few slides ago. This is another student's example, and it shows how in this student's example, it's hard to make it out on the screen, I apologize, but I have the written communication slow clicked open, and the student has a document attached, which is the slow reflection. So yes, the student does satisfy the requirement to have a reflection included on this page, but this isn't as usable as if the text were actually right here in all this white space. So rather than attaching a file, just include your text on the screen for your slow reflections. Now I'm going to conclude by saying good luck with all your final portfolio revisions and email me if you have any questions at all. There's a lot to do to get the portfolio pulled together and it's worth quite a lot of points. You'll want to remind yourself of that. Looking back at our syllabus, it tells you how much value 
the portfolio contains. So let me know if you have any questions. There are a lot of reflections you need to do. There's a major revision that you need to do. And there's a lot of attention to be paid to design elements and the overall multimodality of your portfolio site. Good luck with your resume writing, with your biopersonal statement writing, with the final reflection for the course, the two-page memo writing, and with your revision of the one project you choose to recreate.